What's good gamers? Aklon here, and of course, welcome back to each and every one of you. This is going to be more of like a talking head video. Holy will probably have some stuff on the screen for you to sort of give context to what we're talking about and so on and so forth. But last night during stream, the news broke that Blizzard had just laid off or is in the process of laying off about 1,900 people. And from what we can tell, the vast majority of those employees are from Activision Blizzard. Uh, and it seems like Blizzard may actually be one of the most hardest hit in the development department. From Activision side, it appears as if there's far more business stuff, you know, the suits at Activision. Whereas on Blizzard side, there, there's, there's a lot to cover here. There's a lot to get into. It, it's pretty big. And then, of course, on top of that news, we get the news that Mike Yabara is stepping down from Blizzard. And that comes with its own, uh, shall we say, controversy around it. So let's start with the Mike Ybarra thing, and then we'll get into the layoffs and how this impacts everything, right? And I'll give you my opinions and how things are going to get much, much worse. Believe me, this is not the end. This is merely the beginning. All right, so Mike Ybarra in November was asked by Jason Schreier if he plans on stepping down uh, now that the merger is over. And Mike Ibarra responds, no, they will have to carry me out. I, I love working here. I want to stay. Just a few months later, Mike Ibarra is now leaving. This throws, now, according to Mike Ibarra, he is the one that stepped down. He stepped out. But now, what exactly could have changed from November till now? You know, three months, not even three months. What exactly happened? How did things change so fast? So there's been a lot of rumors around this. The first rumor, of course, was that Mike Ybarra is stepping down from Blizzard and is now going to go work at Microsoft. That has been laid to rest just earlier today. We had in, uh, we had confirmation that Mike Ybarra is taking some time off. He's going to be traveling the world. And uh, when he gets back, he'll start looking at hyper growth opportunities. That's just a euphemism for more places to work that gives me millions and millions of dollars. That's it, right? That's what a hyper growth opportunity looks like. Um, <laughs> it's not, in fact, a penis enlargement, as most probably would have hoped. But all right, so Mike Ybarra is gone fully. And this leads to a lot of speculation around, did Microsoft force Ybarra out? There's been this growing sentiment or belief for a while within the community that Mike Ybarra was actually placed in Blizzard by Microsoft in order to facilitate the takeover. But now that he has been forced out, and I think it's safe to say that he was forced out, mainly because November, you say, no, they'll have to carry me out, and February, uh, end of January, you go, no, nah, I'm I'm good, I'm gonna go. Right, something is up. Why? Why is it that they want to get rid of Mike Ybarra? Now, all of this build-up leads to me basically saying, I can't figure it out. I, I've tried to look everywhere for anyone that has any sort of reasoning that makes sense. The only thing I can think of is that Microsoft wants someone that is maybe more malleable, maybe more controllable, or perhaps Microsoft wants someone that is a little bit more forward-thinking, someone that is going to take a lot more risks. Maybe Microsoft wants Blizzard to take a lot more risks, although, again, when we get to the layoff portion of this video, You'll see why I don't know if Microsoft really gives a shit about risk-taking. Anyways, uh, the question then, of course, becomes who replaces Mike Ybarra? Who will be the new president of Blizzard? My instinct, I have this sneaky suspicion that it may actually be Holly Longdale. And I would actually love that. It's quite clear that Holly Longdale loves the community. She loves the players and she loves the games. You know, ever since she's taken over at World of Warcraft or at the Warcraft IP, good things have happened. You know, uh, Classic is going from strength to strength under her tutelage. So I'm, I'm, I think someone like Holly Longdale would actually be a really good choice for president of Blizzard. I don't really know if there is anyone else uh, because I, another part of me, you just can't help think Microsoft may want to install a lackey. You know, some kind of Microsoft shell that is basically just going to focus on whatever the fuck Microsoft wants. You know, and, and if that is more money, then that is great. If it isn't, then who cares? 
The only reason that may not happen is Microsoft historically hasn't done that with any of their accusations. They, they don't really come in and replace the president and move a new president in that is more friendly to Microsoft. Right now, most people that work in the suit department, at least, would be very friendly to Microsoft. They, they wouldn't really care. You know, they just want to make good games, and, and that, that, that's good. So, like, first and foremost, I do have to say, uh, my heart goes out to literally everyone that's been impacted. I've seen a couple of people on my timeline that I, I've known for quite some time have now lost their jobs, and I'm very sorry for, for what is happening. It sucks. Uh, 1,900 people, that is about 8% of the overall Microsoft Corporation or gaming division. That is 22,000 people. But 1,900 people from Activision Blizzard is a lot more. So it sounds good when you say 8% of the gaming division for Microsoft. But remember, it's not as if there were layoffs across Microsoft. There were layoffs in Microsoft uh, or Activision Blizzard that is now part of Microsoft. The last time I checked, uh, Blizzard sits at uh, between seven and 9,000 employees, I think it is. Uh, and Activision, I think, actually, the last time I checked, it was 12,000 employees, all in all, that worked for Activision Blizzard. Last time I checked, it was 12,000 employees, I think. Am I, am I correct in that? Someone can fact check me in the comment section, because, uh, yeah, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now. But 1,900 of those is a pretty big number. And we're now getting reports that 1,900 may actually not be the real number. Uh, it may actually be much higher than that. Entire teams are being gutted at, at Activision Blizzard. Entire teams are just being destroyed. Uh, you have many, many games that, that are seeing some of their teams halved uh, from what they were before. You have the survival game that was unannounced well kind of announced but also unannounced that didn't have a name or anything six years they've been working on that game and it has been shut down and its entire team has been let go now microsoft said the reason that this this game was shut down was because it it, it was in development hell and they just couldn't figure anything out and so the game isn't going anywhere there's just no point in continuing it's just a natural shutdown it's not really part of the laying off thing. It's just natural, right? And that happens. Most companies in the industry have very high cancellation rates. Most games never actually see the light of day because they just don't work for one reason or another. But when you look at the developers uh, that are laid off that has been working on this game, that is not the sentiment you get on Twitter. More and more... All of these developers are coming out saying they loved working on this game and they were so looking forward to the player base actually getting their hands on this game and things were progressing so well and to just be shut down like this. They, they didn't expect to be part of the layoff team because they were about to bring Blizzard's newest IP, you know? And Blizzard is not a company known for new IPs, so this was a big deal. Uh, and so it came as a big surprise to them when they found out that their entire team is gutted and the game is gone. I don't know what to make of that, quite frankly. I don't know if Microsoft maybe thought to themselves, you know what, we don't want Blizzard to focus on survival games. We want Blizzard to focus on things that they already do well. Would That would be Overwatch, uh, Dra uh, Bo Diablo, and World of Warcraft, and maybe Hearthstone if they still do that well. Not entirely sure. We don't want them to make survival games. We have our companies that do their survival games and we'll, make, we'll get them to make the survival games. We're going to do something else. Now, as that is actually, I think, the worst part of this is the survival game. I was looking forward to that. I know many of you were very much looking forward to the survival game. And to see that just be gutted is, is really, really sad. And like I said, we're getting reports now that 1900 may actually be a little bit on the conservative side of how many people are actually going to be let go here. It may actually be far more than that. But ladies and gentlemen, to shift now to a, an unpopular truth and an uncomfortable truth, but a truth nonetheless, this is not the last time that we will see layoffs at Microsoft. This is not the last time that we'll see layoffs at Activision Blizzard. These layoffs in part was to be expected. 
when accusations happen, you very often end up with multiple teams that basically do the same thing because Activision Blizzard used to publish and release their own games and market their own games. Microsoft also publish and market their own games. So now you have two marketing departments, you have two publishing departments. It's redundant. So it, it, it would always have happened to see massive layoffs across the company as Microsoft doesn't need a lot of those people that are currently working there, obviously. But this, obvious, this, this isn't actually what's happening. We're seeing a lot of developers be let go from the company alongside suits. So just wanted to get that out of the way. But this is going to happen a lot more often. And you really need to look at the industry as a whole, holistically, in order to fully understand it. In the last few months, we have had company after company after company announce massive layoffs. Uh, from Riot, Discord, Microsoft, EA, Ubisoft, every single one of these developers are announcing giant layoffs at their companies. For what? Now, many people say and claim that it was because of COVID. During COVID, everyone was at home, people were stuck. So everyone was buying PCs and everyone was starting to play games. And these gaming companies just started hiring because they thought the demand would never go down. And now that everyone is returning to normal, life is returning to normal, people don't have as much time anymore, don't sit at home as much anymore. Now suddenly these companies are finding themselves completely overstaffed. And while, yes, there might be some truth to that, I've heard a couple of birdies that actually paint a very different picture and you don't just have to believe the sources because I made a video about this long before I heard the little birdies uh, on my second channel on Acalon TV, where I spoke about this exact thing with Riot. Before every financial crash, like we're talking massive, massive depressions and recessions. This is the sort of behavior you see from companies. Remember, every company, every company, have people whose only job it is to look to the future, to try and figure out what is our sales and our business going to look like two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. What are the things that could happen that could seriously impact that? And how ready are we to navigate any potential things that may or may not be happening? One of the key things of recessions throughout history is companies that were not streamlined at the moment that a recession hits went bankrupt uh, like recessions would wipe out many many companies along its wake because it, it is a tough time for business and you usually see the companies that actually survive recessions are those that manage to streamline it is those that manage to get rid of any and all excess weight and basically go into it as lean as possible and then hire your way into a, a victory at the end of it. And this is what I think is happening in the gaming industry right now. The fact that all of these companies together are announcing these layoffs, and it's substantial across the board. Pretty much all of these companies are doing 10 plus percent in layoffs. Suggests to me that they know something the rest of us can only guess to. They can feel the economic winds changing. And they can feel that the money that used to just flow may not be flowing for long. So when these companies do these layoffs, it's not because they can't afford these developers now. It's because they think they won't be able to afford these developers in two years from now. And that's going to be more. The way this is going to work, and you don't have to take my word for it, but we can talk again in about two years, three years from now. The way this is going to work is Microsoft Blizzard is or Microsoft is going to fire lay off 1900 people right now. Then for the next 6 or 7 months they're going to do assessments to see how they streamline things, how did how did everything work now that the 1900 people have been let go and then they'll announce another 2000 and maybe another 2000 after that. So every single time they look at the aftermath once the dust has settled, they figure out better structures and better logistics to make sure that things can happen even better, see who can be made redundant, and then another set of layoff comes in. Uh, you do this for two reasons. One, if you just let go half of your company, this would basically lead the company to a standstill. But two, it's not a good look. If a company announced tomorrow we're letting 50% of our employees go, people would lose their fucking minds. And it would also signal very bad things to investors, because 
half of your company being let go isn't layoffs, right? It's not streamlining for the future. It's basically telling investors, uh, we're fucked. <laughs> Please help, right? And investors don't like that. They, they don't like when things are fucked. They want things to be going swimmingly while letting 8% of your gaming go, uh, of your gaming division go, ah, that's layoffs. You know, that's streamlining. That's more money for us. This is sad and, and it's probably going to get worse. I'm, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. I'm going to be out of here because, you know, uh, that's all I had to say. I just wanted to cover this and wanted to bring you guys the news. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you so much for all of your support. To all of the patrons, $1 a month keeps this channel free from sponsorships that want to sell you stuff that you do not uh, need. Ladies and gentlemen, off Patreon. Thank you so much. And to everyone else, have a wonderful day. Peace out, fam.